Thank you for joining us. I'm Julie March. I'm the Agriculture and Food Security Advisor with USAID's Office of U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance, or OFTA. This morning we had the chance to have a wonderful webinar on the Livestock Emergency Guidelines and Standards, also known as LEGS, and we're fortunate to have two of our colleagues who have worked with and on this guidelines with us here today to have a further conversation. So I'd like to turn it over to them to introduce themselves, and then we'll have a few questions. I'm Andy Catley. I'm a research director at Tufts University. Um, and I've been involved with LEGS since the beginning, really, and uh, I currently chair the, the steering group of LEGS. And I'm Andrew Bisson. I work for Mercy Corps as the livestock advisor. And I've been involved in a number of uh, emergency situations that involve livestock programming. Excellent. We had a chance to hear this morning about how LEGS came about and why it's necessary. And I was um, hoping you could share with the other audi audience some of that background. Why did it first come into existence and why was it needed? Yeah, it's a good question. I think what happened, what, early 2000s, I guess, was that uh, there was a lot of, of livestock programming going on in, especially the Horn of Africa, in places like South Sudan and Somalia complex emergencies uh, as well as droughts and you know those repeated drought responses um, and what happened was uh, a group of practitioners got together and, and kind of agreed that there was a lot of a variation in thinking and programming around livestock uh, and there were concerns you know that in the same area there were uh, NGOs doing very different things contradicting each other, perhaps you know, undermining each other's work, not much coordination and you know, presumably uh, quite, quite varied impact on beneficiaries. Um, and that, that kind of meeting led to the idea that uh, it would be good to have some kind of guidelines and standards in place, uh, perhaps comparable to the sphere model, but, but for livestock. So that was really the orange of, origins of it back in. 2004. You both work in humanitarian interventions. Um, I'm sure you have a whole stack of guidelines on your desk at work on a variety of topics. What kind of need was this guideline fulfilling that, that wasn't filled before, before we had legs? Well, I think in, in the Mercy Corps world we work in, in a number of countries where there are crises and emergency situations. One of, the, one of the drivers here was just how important livestock is in, in the roles of poor people's lives, um, particularly in those crisis countries. Um, so in, in many of the countries that we work, livestock is, is important, particularly pastoral areas. And so the guidelines play a role, as Andy said, in, in coordinating the responses, in making sure that, that different interventions don't do harm to a longer term perspective and system strengthening. Excellent. Yeah, I guess plus also, you know, that in most of these areas, you know, people were either pastoralists or agro-pastoralists. So livestock was kind of central to their whole livelihood. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, one of the most important things to do was to, you know, try and help them protect livestock assets and uh, you know, safeguard nutrition and food security and that kind of thing. So it wasn't as though livestock were kind of marginal to people's livelihoods, they were actually core and central, so it was one of the most logical things to do in terms of humanitarian response. Right. And maybe also the, the cyclical nature of emergencies and crises in many of these countries, that this was a recurring phenomenon, it wasn't a one-off, um, that the, the animal health delivery systems, the traded systems would experience repeated shocks and recoveries, shocks and recoveries, and these standards helped to to break down some of the silos between humanitarian relief and, and early recovery and try and link that up in a more joined up way of programming to try and deliver a, a smoother outcomes over the long run. Right. Great. Um, I'm very familiar with the guidelines so I know how it's written and mm. how easy it is to read but some of our um, listeners may not be familiar. Do you have to be a livestock expert to use this book? Who's the target audience and who do you think is actually using it? Well, I, I think now we have a, a pretty good understanding of who's, who's using it. And the, the target audience is, is very much on the one side humanitarian generalists who perhaps don't know much about livestock. 
And then on the other side, livestock experts who perhaps don't know much about humanitarian assistance. Uh, so those are the two main categories, I think. And it's therefore written in a way which, which makes it accessible to both of those two main audiences. Um, and as we know, the second edition has just come out and there's been a, a lot of thought gone into uh, ensuring that the language isn't too jargonistic and uh, is, is understandable by a range of, of different readers. And I think that's, that's a big improvement actually on the first edition. And for us, as a, as a resource in terms of designing timely and appropriate livestock interventions in emergency crises, often at a, at a field office, they, there may not be a livestock specialist. So this provides a great guidance um, and also uh, a common resource around which advisors from afar can, can relate with the field teams and help them think through some of the strategic decision making, particularly with local partners or local governments and counterparts who, again, may understand the livestock context well but not the humanitarian environment and it provides a, a, a structured approach to coming to a consensus um, in terms of what action needs to be taken and to arrive at that decision making fairly quickly so that the intervention is timely. Right. Good points. So I've been out in the field and actually had people hold up their copy of legs to me and I've held up my copy and it feels right, like some... You go out in the field. Yeah, every now and again. Um, but I'm wondering if either of you can share some examples of where LEGS is in use in the field, uh, where you've seen it being used. Uh, well, I know, you know that uh, it is being used more and more in, in Ethiopia, particularly in relation to drought response. Mm. Uh, and what we're seeing more of, I think, two important approaches. One is this kind of commercial destocking approach, which... Uh, agencies are, are trying to use more and more of, including, including Mercy Corps. And second, this, this whole idea of uh, veterinary vouchers, which um, is, you know, is coming up more and more in Ethiopia. A lot of interest uh, in NGOs and government in rolling that out more. So that's, those are two, quite, I think, quite nice examples mm -hmm. of where this is being used more. We've also had uh, very positive experiences in Ethiopia um, being hit by a drought in a normal project which has been able, through the use of the guidelines, to switch gears and deliver emergency livestock interventions through the, the veterinary systems and services, the traders that we were working with in a development context and to support them and, and to, to take and make an opportunity out of what was essentially a crisis to strengthen those systems. Right now we're thinking through emergency livestock program in South Sudan in a, in a very complicated contextual situation and it, it's extremely useful to have some set out standards and guidance when there's a lot of other contextual issues that we need to take, take into account. It, the, the guidelines lay out some programming options which we can select and put into that proposal and I'm hoping we'll be able to roll those out. Uh, and then other groups that you might not immediately think of, like uh, World Animal Protection, which is a big animal mm -hmm. welfare organisation. Uh, they're also, I think, uh, using legs in places like Southeast Asia for uh, you know, floods and cyclones and those kinds of uh, rapid onset disasters they have down there. And they, they say they find it very useful, which is good to hear. Not to leave out our friends in West Africa. I know we have projects in, in Niger that are implementing restocking programs. Uh, we're looking again right now at the, the Boko Haram situation and how various commercial destocking issues might, might come up and might be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the guidelines have a, a global uh, versatility. Right. And I think that was the goal, to have a platform of learning for the entire humanitarian community. And I think um, it's succeeding and you can tell because people in West Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, people are adopting it um, everywhere. So. Um, last question for you, Andy. You highlighted briefly some of the differences between the first version. And mm. can you tell us a bit more about the changes in the second version and how people can get a copy if they want it? Yes. Um, the changes in the second edition, I think, are first to, to clarify aspects of the initial assessment process and simplify that a bit. That's one useful thing. And then on, in terms of the, the other content, we've tried to weave in issues around cash-based programming, 
So uh, where might you use a, a cash response to actually assist livestock, to assist livelihoods? Uh, I think particularly for me in the whole area of restocking, uh, getting people to think that, well, it may just be simpler and have a bigger impact if we actually provide people with cash rather than animals. Bearing in mind that restocking is actually pretty difficult to do well, I think, and is expensive. So those are, that's an important change. Um, the, the animal welfare aspect has been strengthened quite a bit. Um, and the issues there really are to, to clarify how a legs intervention has livelihoods objectives primarily, but has a kind of secondary objective, particularly if you're an animal welfare organisation, which has uh, animal welfare benefits, which helps the animal welfare organisation see how legs is relevant to them. So that's, that's quite useful as, as well. Um, and then I think the... Um, the whole editing process, as I mentioned earlier, has been to, to simplify and clarify the language. And that's really been kind of complemented with this redesign, which uh, is, is much easier to use. It's a much more open, you know, uh, exciting kind of design and, and book to use relative to the first edition. So I think those are probably the main changes. Okay. And if our listeners want to get a copy, how do they do that? Uh, if they want to get a copy, well, you can download it free of charge from the LEGS website, mm -hmm. which is www.livestock-emergency.net, okay. uh, where you can get a PDF copy, or you can also get information on how to order it Perfect. as well. Okay.